The programs normally seen at this time will not be shown in order to bring you the following special presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. The following program is devoted to a television star who was a unique individual in my friend, Paul Dixon, better known to his thousands of fans as Paul Baby. They also called him the mayor of Neesville, a city you won't find on any map, but a place in the hearts of the youngest, most beautiful group of women that ever watched a television show. He captivated his audiences with the unpredictable as well as the predictable. Five days a week for almost 20 years until his untimely death on December the 28th, 1974. Join us as we relive the mystique of this remarkable man, Paul Dixon. <laughs> This has got to be the youngest, most beautiful group of women we've ever had on this television show. Oh, I'll never be the same. <laughs> Mercy, what's a mother to do? <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Look, lady, you run your railroad and I'll run mine. Uh... They're laughing at you. What's the matter, lady? Don't you put yours on this way? Pauline, will you take this questionable rooster, Harry, to be your wedded rooster? Is it for me? Who do you watch every morning on television? Paul Baby. <laughs> Paul didn't sing, dance, act, or play a musical instrument, but every morning at 9 o'clock through the magic of television, he visited the housewives of the Midwest, bringing delightful entertainment and pure enjoyment. Getting him hooked, as he called it, on his dumb show. I didn't see how he got away with what he did. He was the star of the show, but he let everyone else be top banana. It was different from anything ever seen on television before or since. The popular phrase of the time was, only a woman knows what another woman wants at 9 o'clock in the morning. What was that? Perhaps this young lady can tell us. Did you watch this dumb thing? Yeah. Isn't this the dumbest show you ever seen? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Three. What's my name? Paul Baby. <laughs> Why do you watch this show? I don't know. Paul Dixon, a look back with your hosts, Bob Hope, Phil Donahue, Bonnie Lou, and Colleen Sharp Murray. This special is brought to you by the many fine Dracket products and by those delicious Little Debbie snack cakes. To the viewer, Paul Baby was like a member of the family. And our show, in Paul's words, was as comfortable and relaxed as an old shoe. And as you know, the audience controlled the show. And if Paul Baby did or said something they liked, they asked for it over and over and over. So the Dixon Show naturally had its daily institutions. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Paul Dixon Show. And now, here he is, our little Santa Claus himself, the one and only Paul Baby. I tell you, listen, I can't believe this has got to be the youngest, most beautiful group of women we've ever had on this television show. I can't believe that front row. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. I hope you're getting these shots, Steve. Where are you all from? Yeah. Anybody else here from Kentucky? Yeah. Kentucky? Yeah. Indiana? We don't start till everybody's hands over their heart. That ain't your heart, lady. <laughs> Are you ready? The PTA, the PTA, united now we stand. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen, little Colleen Sharp. Let's say hello to that. And here she is, also the star of the now defunct Midwestern Hayride, Bonnie Lou. Commercials. I know. How many
many of you girls took a bath this morning? <laughs> Did I take a bath? What? <laughs> Got a cute letter from a seven-year-old kid. Letter. This this doctor of ours is Doctor Seymour Heinius. No gag. It's his, his true true name. He's a, a family doctor. He's a very good doctor. He delivers babies. I think he's a general practitioner. Yes, he is. His wife's name is Rosie. She came to the state fair a couple years ago to see us. That's right. Their dog is Big Red. Got and, and what, Mel? There, uh, well, we've tested, ch uh, checked their ancestry way back. All to, the way back? To the days of Caesar. Caesar, Heine. Caesar. Oh. What? All the way back to the Vikings, remember? No. Thor? Oh, Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Thor, Heine. Several of these institutions created the most prized possessions in the Midwest. The knee tickler, the night shirt, and the kosher salami. Okay, you right. Where do you want it, dear? Anywhere. I have to put it above that ham because this little thing isn't long enough. Okay. okay. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. Oh! Go ahead, you get it. <laughs> oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. All right. What? You'll be all right. I think I will. Oh, uh, you're a little doll, baby. How old is your baby? She'll be a year old next week. A year old next week. Right. Okay. Here we go now. Everything's fine. Oh, no. There you are. There's your little knee tickler. God love you, and that's for you. Thank okay. You. And God love you. There you Paul, baby, who's that night shirt you have there? Could it be for me to wear so I won't cry? And did I hear you say you're going to whip one on me today? Take me in your arms. I'll surely die. <laughs> Here you go. How many of you wear something like this uh, to bed at night? One, two, how many wear pajamas? Nobody? <laughs> Come on, here we go. I want, <laughs> I want to say hi to my mother, too. She just had surgery yesterday, and she's in Logan Memorial Hospital. Is that a fact? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And did I hear you say you're going to whip one on me today? <laughs> We have to stop seeing each other like this. Where do you want to meet? Where do I want to meet? <laughs> Come on. Okay, okay, all right. Let's give her the salami. Come on, might as well. Uh, this is a lovely salami holder. Huh? I... Did you get the question? It's either yes or no. Here, you're not doing anything. Unsnap that. Unsnap it. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. Even Paul's lovely wife, Marge, was a target for his humor. Margie bought him a miniskirt last week, but she can't wear it. See, her, her legs don't go all the way up. Marge is here for just one reason. I didn't want to kiss her goodbye. I don't mean that. Margie, come here. Oh. Girls, how does my hair look this morning? Have I got it on straight? Have I got it on straight? That's a familiar phrase. He really meant, is my hair piece on straight? It was no secret. One day he showed up with a hair piece, and he told the audience, if you like it, I'll keep it. If you don't, I'll take it off. Then one day, he tried a new style. I can't run around or even lay around looking like this. But you see, I, now unlike you, you work. Uh, now, he doesn't have a hairpiece on. This is his own hair. But you work. Uh, 
Even Paul's heart condition became a part of the show. I was waiting for you to sit down. <laughs> well, see, I had that terrible coronary, you know, and I have to conserve my energy, you know. Uh, you, but you knew, you, you're hooked. Right. Huh? <laughs> right. Why? On this dumb thing, we don't do a thing? Well, that's why we like it. Is it? You know, music was an important part of our show. Does that do anything for you? Paul occasionally wanted to get into the act. Mm, call me irresponsible. Call me unreliable. <laughs> Oh, my lands, Even the engineers are leaving. Oh, call me independable. <laughs> Here he joins Mel Horner and Larry Downing for the wee wee bit. If I didn't My every prayer begin at death with just your name. And would I be sure that this is love beyond compare? Wait, wait, wait. Hold it. What's the matter with you, Bruce? Don't you screen these musicians? Why, certainly, you silly savage. Another popular routine was Paul Baby rockin' and a rollin' like Elvis. Go, man! One day, we were setting up for this routine when Bruce Bromfield had a little problem at the piano. Uh, come on, you ready to go? You ready, Bruce? This is Valentine's Day. Oh! That really did the same thing. Oh, my. Oh, Dad. Take a picture. Oh! I know our budget is low, but this is ridiculous. Although our show didn't rely on record pantomimes, there was a special one, a Dixon classic. It's in the book. The man said she lost a sheep. Turns right around and bowls and states. She doesn't know where to find them. <laughs> the stupid audacity to say, leave them alone. <laughs> now, 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 think for a moment, think. If the sheep were lost and you couldn't find them, you'd have to leave them alone, wouldn't you? <laughs> so leave them alone. Leave them alone. It's in the book. The chemistry between Paul Dixon and his audience was unbelievable. I was always amazed at his tremendous ability to pick on certain members of the studio audience. It resulted in some of the funniest moments on television, completely unrehearsed and, by all means, spontaneous. You're gonna put me on a, a shirt or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm gonna put you on a shirt or whatever What's it is. What's up in the front of cunts? It's what? What's up in the front of cunts? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Oi! <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> what was so funny, Jim? You? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? You and your, um... <clears throat> Uh, ad libs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Grab him. Lord's sake, take it home and enjoy it, okay? Whoops. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to do it, ma'am. Did I hurt your... Okay. I didn't... I didn't bruise you somewhat, did I? How fast were you going, dear? 82. <laughs> and he asked us when he came back to the car if we were going to the Paul Dixon show. No. I swear on it. No, did he really? He really did. He said, girls, did he looked at me, he says, on your way to Cincinnati? We said, yes. And he says, Paul Dixon show. And I said, yes, sir. And he still gave you a ticket? Still, he'd already had it written out. I couldn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> I had my dress pulled up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this from? He wrote that. Oh. Mine. Is that a fact? She's drunk. What did you say your mommy wanted? She wants you to look at her knees. <laughs> She, she wants the baloney. <laughs> she ain't got any baloney. It's an ocean with. Why did you say? Put it on her. Put it on her. I got four of my need you too. Uh, I have a little pussy, and her coat is silver gray. And she lives in a great white meadow, and she never runs away. She's always going to be a pussy. She'll never be a cat, because she's a pussy willow. <laughs> pookie, pookie, pookie. P-A-U-L-D-I-X-O-N-U-C. He's held in reverence. His sexy charms make Bob Ron wince. <laughs> Baby, his Paul Bob Perry, you are now the first uh, uh, recipient of a call here on Paul Dixon's Little Money Call. We have a jackpot of 10 cents. Oh, wow. What day do they serve bean soup at Coxie's Corner. I'll give you 10 seconds to answer. Wednesday. 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 Shut up, I said 10 seconds. Wednesday. Well, Bob, congratulations. And you, are, I'll now give your girlfriend uh, our jackpot. Okay. We won't make out a check, I'll pay her in cash. There was no generation gap on the Dixon Show, as you'll see. Are you all right? You want to sit down? Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, well, sit down. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and we're married. Uh, married, I mean. Uh, You've been married? Married? You, you... Yeah, that's too long. <laughs> You've been married too long, he says. <laughs> You're a good pigeon. Yeah. yeah. To get it right, this is the first wife. Yeah. That's your first wife? Yeah. Is he expecting more? At his age? We started our first fight, and it ain't over yet. <laughs> yeah. When I first met her, she's so sweet angel, I could eat her up. 
No, I wish I did. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Sutter. From where? Sutter. Yeah. You know, it's about seven miles that way from Frenchburg. Sutter, S-U-D-I-T-H. But I didn't come from there this morning. Where'd you come from this morning? Home. <laughs> Well, where, where do you live now, if you don't live in Suddeth anymore? Next door to her. <laughs> I've never even heard of that county. How far are you from Memphis, home, honey? Memphis. From home? Yes, I mean, how far is Suddeth from here? Down the road. 158 miles from my driveway. And she... <laughs> I'll ask one more question. Stand up. Uh, may I ask, honey, where is your driveway? Next to hers. What? You're the guy that's hooked. Well, of course I am. Why do you watch the show? Why, I like it. Yeah. Why, I think it's great. Is that a fact? If I wouldn't, I wouldn't have come a the darn fur to get here. Are you 84? When did you get married? Saturday afternoon. <laughs> the first night, you hold hands. Second night, you hold hands. And the third night, you're too tired. <laughs> and our family died, and our grandma took us. Yeah. Said, I'll take the twins so they don't part them. And her word has come true. true. We've never, never been, been parted. Part. When she died, I went with her. <laughs> Even the children who accompanied their parents got into the act. Uh, there's Black Bush. I didn't think I saw that. Well, he's a dirty old man. <laughs> okay, go on over and give the one you'd pick a big kiss. Go on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who are you visiting, Greg? Oh, my people and my Mima. They're up there. His people and his Mima. <laughs> well, how long you been here, Greg? Uh, I think it's about two or four weeks. Two or four weeks? <laughs> yeah. Do, would you go to school, Greg? Uh, but I think I'm quitting this <laughs> year. I'm a teapot shirt in flout. Here is, here is my homeboy. <laughs> Paul's continuous love and concern for others also sparked some serious moments as well. And your and your and your wife has been in the hospital how long? She's been in about five months. Five, five months. And her little boy, she's never seen him, has she? No, she hasn't seen him. So we wanted to bring him out here and get a real good close-up picture of him, so his mom in the hospital could see him. How about that, huh? Uh, what do you want to sing? The Star Spangled Banner. Well, by golly, if any kid wants to sing the Star Spangled Banner, everybody stand up. The sight of the Star Spangled Banner, yeah, way for the land of the free and the home of the brave. At one point, a half-hour version of the Paul Dixon show was syndicated across the country, astounding viewers with Paul's morning madness. A farmer in Arkansas wrote to Paul saying he couldn't get his wife out to milk the cows. She was afraid she'd miss the show. So Paul decided to call him on the air. Well, Charles, yeah. this is Paul, baby. Yeah, oh my goodness, the man we watch on television. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? Are you kidding me? No! Oh, my God, wait till I call the wife. Oh, my goodness, she's... Get the wife in. She's out there with chickens. <laughs> Paul, let me ask you a question. Now, before she gets here... Uh oh Let me... <laughs> have you got... Have, yeah, yeah, what? Have you got one of them shirts? <laughs> I promise you, we'll put a, a night shirt in the mail and we'll mark it to you very personal. Oh, my goodness. And then we, and then when you get it, I want you to put it on her. Oh, my goodness. I've, I'm going to ask a friend of mine to stand by. Uh. <laughs> I just... Oh, this... Is... <laughs> 
Would that be a man or a lady friend? Well, <laughs> someone help me to hold her. That's all. <laughs> Harry, you idiot, stand still. Will you have this chicken-hearted Pauline for your wedded hen? There was more to the Paul Dixon show than just the daily routines or the spontaneous happenings that took place between Paul and his audience. I especially looked forward to those special days. Special not only to the viewers, but to those of us who worked on the show as well. One of the first and most popular was the annual Baby Day show. It was held the Friday before Mother's Day, and the studio audience was composed of 160 mothers with their babies nine months or younger. And I want you to know this is the most beautiful group of women that we've ever had on this television show. You will hear no applause here this morning. Absolutely. If my pants fall off, you'll hear no applause. Paul then turned his attention to those who would soon be mothers. Each spring, we threw a bridal shower for 160 brides-to-be with something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Well, I'm just going to put this garter on you. We're not going to do anything. Why, we're not going to do anything wrong. No, who are you? Sharon Taylor. Sharon? Taylor. And you're marrying James Bond? Yes, sir. What does Jim do? He's an evangelist. Is it? He didn't want you to touch my leg. He's an evangelist? And the angels lit the candles. I know he's going to put this on you. We're not going to do anything wrong. Not on this. Not mine. What'd you say? <laughs> you, sure you, want. Go, you sure you want to go through with this evangelist bit? Uh, My knees are shaking. <laughs> Since our show catered mainly to women, one special show was a natural featuring the in fashion hot pants. How are you? Good to see you. I want everybody... Oh, you got the wet look on. Now, girls, there they are, the boys in the band. Look great. <laughs> Bonnie Lou and Colleen Sharp. Let's bring them out here, bro. <laughs> Take it off. Take it all off. Speaking of fashion, there was a day when the show featured another style, Come As You Are. Paul invited the audience to come to the show dressed as they would be if they were watching the show at home. And you wouldn't believe the fashion show that resulted. You brought your bed. You brought your bed. That's where I watch them in the morning, so I brought along with me. Well, go ahead, come on. There's, there's room for both of us. <laughs> Paul always said he never met a woman he couldn't love. Well, to prove that, he invited 160 women who had to weigh at least 185 pounds to come to the show for Fat is Beautiful Day. Now, what are you going to do? Uh, Colleen's going to do this. A little watermelon man, I guess. A uh, watermelon man. Okay, here we go. Then, not to leave anyone out, he hosted our tall girl show, inviting women who were at least five feet, ten inches tall. This is my potty stool that I brought for you to stand on so you don't get a crink in your neck looking up. <laughs> but I have to take it home. So what, what do I do now? I get up here in the sand. How, how tall are you, dear? I'm six foot and flat feet, but I've got my shoes. Okay. High heel sneakers on. <laughs> There is a lot here to love. There were other special days when our show originated from various locations in the Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, and Indianapolis areas. For example, the grandstand at the annual Ohio State Fair, where audiences would begin arriving at 5.30 in the morning in order to get a good seat for the 9 o'clock show. As with the studio show, there was always the unexpected. He 
you said nothing new and different ever happened on the Dixon Show. You should have seen the morning the Dixonian Institute of Performing Arts presented the Shakespearean epic, The Merchant of Neesville. Look what spews forth from his robe. His knobby knee. I do smell a rat. Boy, do I smell a rat. Seize this thief disguised as a friar. The most talked about television special of Paul's career had to be the chicken wedding. One day, one woman brought in a plain old rubber chicken, and I don't know why she did it. She gave it to me. And this one day, I held that chicken up, and I said, uh, well, there must be a great sale on dressed chickens going on at Kroger this week, and I threw the chicken over my head. For months, this went on, and then somebody says, You're, you should have that chicken dressed, and somebody sent me a dress for this chicken and called it Pauline. Now I knew it was a girl. Before then, I didn't. And then they started sending all these clothes for Pauline, and somebody says, Pauline needs a boyfriend. And somebody sent another chicken or brought another chicken with hair glued on his chest and a goatee and all. And this is uh, uh, Har uh, Harry, uh, Pauline's boyfriend. And we had those two on for a while. Somebody said they're going to get married. And I said, all right, we'll marry these two dumb chickens. I think that we ought to, first of all, introduce you now to the, to the groom, who is Harry Chicken. I want you to know how much I appreciate your taking the time and effort to get up this early to come down here and be the best man of the wedding of Harry and Pauline. I, I'm glad to be here, Paul. When do I sing? Oh, you ain't singing, pal. <laughs> oh, promise me that someday oh, I you and I <laughs> will take our love together to some sky. <laughs> I didn't know he cared. <laughs> the matrons of honor, first ladies and gentlemen, Miss Marty Aldis. May we have a little applause and some music. <laughs> Let's bring Colleen and Bonnie Lou. <laughs> Marty, are you all right? He, she sure is, yes. <laughs> And you girls, how do you feel about the whole thing? Oh, we're so... It's just terrible. I just, I just love wedding. I just... I'll miss them so. What? I'll miss them so. They're just, they're just like sister and brother. Always said we're for the I birds. know, I know. We have had them around here for a long time, haven't we? We dress and dress them little things a million times. I put her girdle and bra on 42 times. Let's bring Pauline in. Here we go. Are you ready there with a camera slowly? Followed by Roger Neiser of the Kroger Company who is giving the bride away. Roger, do you take this girl to be, oh no, you're not getting married, are you? No. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, May we all get serious. Friends, we have gathered together in the presence of this audience and all our sponsors to join together this hen, Pauline, and this rooster, Harry, in chicken-hearted matrimony. And I, as the mayor of Neesville, will now perform the ceremony. We will now proceed with a song by that eminent songbird, Miss Marion Spellman. Happy Bell Day! Oh, in the love nest with her eggs she'll sleep. She's a virgin in a gilded. Now get in the get in the gear, kid. Get in the gear. Pauline and Harry, I want to remind you that this marriage is taking place as a result of audiences and viewers of the Paul Dixon Show, who have forced us into marrying you two dumb chickens. If any person can show just cause why Pauline and Harry may not be joined together, 
then you had better crow or cackle now or hereafter forever perch silently in your own corner of the yard. Yeah. Now, we're going through with it. And besides, somebody's got a gun on my back. Harry, you idiot, stand still. Will you have this chicken-hearted Pauline for your wedded hen? Will you love her, comfort her, keep her in sickness and in health, and promise not to ruffle her feathers as long as you both shall live? <laughs> Pauline, will you take this questionable rooster, Harry, to be your wedded rooster, to keep an eye on him? Will you love him and promise not to make him live in that damn <laughs> basement? Come on, kid, do something. <laughs> don't just don't just stand there. Say something. They got to rerun the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives this chicken to be wed? I do. <laughs> well, shut up and kiss me. <laughs> For as much as Harry the Rooster and Pauline the Hannibal consented together in chicken-type wedlock and have placed their faith in the Kroger Company to support them, I, as mayor of Neesville, now pronounce they are husband and wife. Harry. You may peck your bride. <laughs> Pauline, you may peck him back. That's getting sickening. Both of you stand up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the wedding has been concluded, and Pauline and Harry will now leave arm in arm with Roger Neiser and Marty and the wedding party. Plenty of time, slower, you idiot. It's Christmas Eve, my little one. Oh, this is such a special night for you and for me. Paul Dixon was born and raised in Albia, Iowa. He was not always the star of his highly successful Paul Dixon show, and he was more than just a performer. In a 1970 special entitled Paul Baby, Paul tells reporter Jack Lascouli how his career in broadcasting began. As I said, my father had a drugstore in uh, Iowa, a little town in Albia, Iowa, and he wanted me to become a, a druggist. All I ever wanted to do was to, to be in radio back in those days, and of course then television. But uh, when my dad died, I had a younger brother, and I had a younger sister, and I had a mother. And uh, I tried working, and I tried going to Drake University, and I, it didn't work. Uh, I, I you know, didn't have enough money. So that's when I uh, got my first job in radio. In uh, Des Moines, Iowa, I worked there for 12 hours before I got fired. The guy said I should go back to my dad's drugstore. Uh, I did for a while, but not long. And uh, then the trail led to Chicago, and... Uh, from Chicago to Cincinnati. Before leaving Iowa, Paul married his Margie. She was not only the object of his love, but as we have seen, the target of his humor. His first job in Cincinnati was at WCPO Radio as a newscaster. His abilities earned him the title of Cincinnati's top newscaster in a local poll in 1947. Next, he turned to being a disc jockey and was quite a success. In 1951, Coronet Magazine named him one of the top ten DJs in the country. Then one day, he was told he would be doing television. Well, fine. What do I do? He says, that's up to you. He says, you've got three hours this afternoon. Start working. And uh, that's how we got started on television. Nobody told me what to do or how to do it. But we pantomimed records back in those days because we had no music, we had no audience, and uh, we just started. Paul's show became so popular that it landed on the Dumont Network, originating from New York. By this time, the Dixon family had become larger. Paul, Marge, Pam, and Greg. To them, Cincinnati was home. As a result, Paul returned to Cincinnati, this time to WLW. One of his early shows was Top of the Morning. Then on April 24th, 1955, the Paul Dixon show went on the air. All was not easy. Paul worked very hard for success. He fought back through illness and personal tragedy. Early on, a near fatal bout with pleurisy and pneumonia kept him from the show for three months. In 1970, as his show neared its 15th anniversary, 
His 19-year-old son, Greg, was killed in an automobile accident. Paul struggled through the grief and returned to the show several weeks later for a remote in Columbus, Ohio. We love you, see? They love you. And the show goes on. I think you all know this is a very difficult thing for me to do. But if you'll put up with me, we'll continue. We will. Okay? Uh, you don't get over something like this in a week or two, but I know that's what he would want, me up here. So? <laughs> well, that's all I need. In August of that year, Paul suffered a heart attack. It would be December before his health would permit him to return. But return he did. I'm really scared to death, but I can't tell you how great it is to be back. <sighs> and how wonderful it is. I'm hanging in there, Gene. I'm hanging in there. How do I look? You didn't say it. Wow. Despite all of this, Paul still found time to help others. His own experience with a coronary led him to volunteer work for the American Heart Association, and for three years he served as honorary chairman. In 1973, he received the National Kidney Foundation's Public Service Award for his work in promoting the organ donor program. Each year, he collected money from his audiences for the Ruth Lyons Children's Christmas Fund, and he helped raise funds for the Bob Hope House, a halfway house for troubled boys. Above all, Paul was a devoted husband and loving father. In 1973, he became a grandfather when Pam presented him with granddaughter Robin. In 1974, a second granddaughter, Shannon, was still in the hospital when Paul was rushed to that same hospital, stricken with an aneurysm. The night before his attack, he appeared with Robin in his Christmas special. It's Christmas Eve, my little one. Oh, this is such a special night for you. And for me. For you, because you'll awaken with a joyful morning filled with wonderful surprises and all the things our love can do to delight you. Oh, there's a shining Christmas tree and a doll, a music box and some toys, and joy for me because I'll watch your happiness. All this joy we will share because of the birthday of the Christ child, who taught us that in loving and giving, we find our own happiness and that angels do watch over us. Oh, angels, bless you, little one, while you're fast asleep tonight. You'll awake to dancing toys, candy canes, and Christmas joys, and I pray your whole life through, angels will watch over you. Loving you the way I do, my little one, sleep well tonight. Loving you the way I do, oh, my dear little one, sleep well. Merry Christmas. The president of Multimedia Incorporated, Mr. Walter E. Bartlett. All of us here at Multimedia are proud to have presented this delightful look back at a man we all knew and loved very much, Paul Dixon. I'm here with some very special people I know you'll want to see. In the last segment, we saw Paul with his granddaughter, Robin, in the 1974 Christmas program. Well, here is that same Robin today, along with her sister, Shannon, and her brother, Nelson. Also joining us is Paul's wife, Marge, and his daughter, Pam Sipsey. Paul Dixon, a devoted family man, host of one of the most popular shows in the country, a legend in broadcasting. He is remembered for his special talents, his warmth, and his unique ability to make people happy. Paul was a close personal friend of mine, and I believe his outlook on life was best summed up in the words of his most requested and most performed song, You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. Oh, you're nobody 
till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody cares. Now you're getting nervous. Very. <laughs> oh, you may be king, you may possess the world and all its gold, but gold won't bring you happiness when you're growing old. Oh, Dixon, a look back. This special has been brought to you by the many fine Dracut products and by Little Debbie Snack Cakes, celebrating 25 years of value and goodness. and ye shall receive. Who says nothing different ever happens on this show, right? All the prizes are going over on this side. You can do that, come on. You know, I've often said on the air, what an empty place this world would be if you had no one to love you and you didn't have somebody to love. These are really my sentiments.